Tum Tum. <laughs> off Boro artists' techniques, you know, and like, that, that, that's something that's a uh, first thing in history that Italians are ripping off somebody else rather than everybody else ripping off the Italians as well. Yeah. And I think that's pretty... So you important. think that there's some head shops up in Italy now? There's not head shops, man. They're taking what we're doing in Boro to make pipes and they're actually making vessels out of it. Vases, fucking chandeliers, that kind of stuff. Like, okay. They're, they're taking it and applying it to their own technique and that's really neat. I mean, the fact that there's a transitional knowledge going across, you know, pe people who taught the world how to blow glass are actually learning how to blow glass from a bunch of self out of America. It's pretty neat. And have your apprentices learned quick, or uh, how long? It's not about quick with us. Well, pro, like the, the thing is, for me, I, I'm going to be really hard on you. I'm going to do what nobody did for me. Nobody sat there and made me refine every skill until it was perfect. They didn't sit there and force me to learn it all the way through. All of our teachers weren't necessarily always looking out for long-term success. They would show you how to do something, and then say, okay, I showed it to you, figure it out from there. And there's nothing wrong with that mindset, it's just not my mindset. Like, if I'm going to bother teaching somebody, I'm going to teach somebody what I know to the fullest degree that I can. And we ask them for a year for our apprentice. We ask for a year of their life. So it's going to take at least a year to learn what we can show. So would you say that you guys are a company now with... with oh yeah, dude, we're an LLC, we have two manufacturing businesses, like, we have the retail side that we do with the home decor products, we have a wholesale side that we do for all the functional art, like, we work hard, we work really hard for some years now, and it's paid off. We work actually a completely homegrown corporation, we've done everything cash up front, like, we have no debts, no credit cards, no liabilities, no overheads like that. Like, if we have it, we own it. If we're doing a market, we pay for it up front. If we're doing a project, we bought every tool and every piece of glass to do it. Like, you can't do it cash, it's not done. That's why we call our business over and handle it, actually. Do you see a lot of people asking for custom? That's Honestly, over the years, any market that we do have an open torch at or two open torches at, probably 40% of our sales are custom pieces. And it's not necessarily the most fun thing we do. Like, it's what we really get down on. It's something that teaches me and makes me go outside my normal skill range and do something I'm not going to do normally. Like, I would have never thought to make a penguin as an ornament until a woman requested one a couple of years ago. And next thing I know, I was making penguins for three days because I couldn't keep up with the demand for them. And so it's just like, you never know what's just going to come out of a custom piece. It's going to be a one-off, never seen again, or...
So I was born on March 7th, 1983, um, in Las Vegas, Nevada. I have seven sevens. The night I remember I couldn't sleep and I had gone upstairs uh, to the living area. Everybody was out. There was a rocking chair in there that I loved. So I would sit in that rocking chair and rock. Well, when I got up there, somebody was already there in the chair. They were rocking. And he was an older elderly man. And mind you, I was probably about six or seven, somewhere around that, that age group. And I sat down and I started having a conversation with him. You know, and I just assumed I come from a Hispanic family, so there's a lot of family members, and I'm always meeting cousins and aunts and uncles that I didn't know. Tom Tom?